Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple end card template for your YouTube videos in Adobe After Effects. So if you didn't know, on YouTube, you can add end cards to the end of your videos, or you can put interactive buttons of subscribe or different videos or playlist in rectangle or circle shapes. This is kind of like the updated version of annotations, and you can put it at the last up to last 20 seconds of your video. And when we're in the YouTube editor, it'll provide a nice appealing backdrop for those interactive buttons. So in After Effects, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to Create New Composition, and I'll make it 1920 by 1080, a standard HD size. I'll leave the background color to be black, and the duration of this clip by default is at 30 seconds, but the maximum end card length is 20, so I'm just gonna go with that as a good standard setting. The next thing I'm going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid, and just create a black solid as our background layer, and we're gonna leave that as is for now. Next, I'm gonna go up to my Shape Layer, and I'm gonna grab the, I can use Rectangle or Rounded Rectangle if that's more of your aesthetic, but I'm just gonna keep it at Rectangle, and I'm actually going to create a new shape I can adjust the size of it by going in to transform and lower the scale quite a bit so that it serves as the stylish box for our end card video. So if I press V, I can actually move this around and place it where I want. And this is where you're gonna have to consider how do you want your layout to be. On your YouTube editor, you can have up to four elements and at least one of them must be a video, but I like to add a subscribe button, which is a circle. So in effort to keep it pretty minimal, let's give the viewer one choice to watch the next video or subscribe. So I'm gonna make this one box for the video, fill up the right half of the screen and, and kind of make it a decent size. And I can make sure it's centered by going over to the right hand side, going over to align and clicking this little center vertical alignment. It'll make sure it does that. And then next I can go to my shape tool again this time grabbing the ellipse tool. Let's make sure I deselect this current shape layer to create a new one. And I will click and hold shift to make sure I have a symmetrical circle being made. Now, you can't see what's going on kind of because I'm working with black fill on black background. But if I were to change the color of this just for demonstration, you see the shape of this as well as the shape of the other box are there. I'll also align this vertically, and now I can just kind of play around visually with how they're balanced to make sure everything looks good, in my opinion. They say when you give people too many options, then they just don't pick any. Moving on to making this thing look pretty, not just a box against a solid background, something that you could have made in paint. Let's highlight the shape layers again, and I'm holding shift to highlight both of them at once, and right click and add a layer style. So I can add an outer glow, inner glows, whatever I want, but I'm gonna add an outer glow to each of those, and I'm going to make that outer glow a different color, whatever color I want, so let's say a bright neon blue, I'll make it right there, and I can increase the opacity and blending mode of that, as well as the size and strength. I'm also gonna change the fill color back to black, because I wanna go for the whole transparent theme, and I can adjust actually the entire opacity of the fill by going to the blending options, advanced blending, and lowering the fill opacity, which is gonna allow us to see some of the background when we add it. But now let's talk about the background. So right now it's solid black, nothing there, but there's a lot of fun things that we can do in After Effects to create some animated backgrounds without doing too much work. If we actually go over to the effects and preset panel, there's a bunch of fun animation presets for backgrounds. So there's all these different ones you can play with, clouds, fogs, circuits, whatever. For example, if I was to drag this one here, blocks on there, it creates this fun block animation. Looks kind of, maybe it'd be cool for like the end of a gaming video or something like that. But if we go to the effects control panel on the left, we see what this preset actually did was just add fractal noise, a minimax effect, and a tritone gradient map type of color. So we can actually adjust all these things to be whatever we want. I'm going to search for an effect called CC Starburst. It's in the simulation folder, and it'll take whatever you have on the solid layer and turn it into a starburst, effectively like 
a star field that animates and looks like you're going through stars. But I want to slow it down a little bit. It's a little too fast for my taste. So I'm going to adjust some settings here. I like my star field to be a lot more scattered, a little bit more open-ended, and a little slower. So I'm going to lower the speed of that considerably. Now when I press play, I've got a gentle star field going on. Uh, they're actually kind of twinkling from the original fractal noise, I think. Uh, but you can apply the star burst on anything. It just needs something to turn into stars. So if I were to have deleted all of those things that were generated by the preset and instead just used like a generate a solid fill color of red or something or white, it'll turn anything that I generate into a star field of my choice. So I can make a blue one if I wanted press OK. That's probably the most simple way to do it is add a fill and then a starburst, but you can burst anything into stars. So anyways, we have this cool template going on right now. And the final thing that you could do is just add text that you like, perhaps your social media handles, any other information that you want the viewer to have at your end card. So I can grab my text tool right over top of here, something like next video. And if I had other logos or PNGs that I had, like perhaps, perhaps social media icons that you can find on their websites, I could drag and drop those into their own layer and place them wherever I want, just if I want to give users that information as well. So once you've experimented with all these endless amount of settings and colors and gotten it exactly how you like, you can go ahead and export your composition. So I can just go to composition, add to render queue, press render and then keep that rendered clip somewhere in a folder and you can attach it onto whatever video or project you're working on at the end for the last 20 seconds. You can add music, whatever you like. So when we upload our video and we press edit video on YouTube, we can go into the end screen and annotations and it'll open up the end card editor where we can add different elements such as the subscribe button, and place that into our little template. And we can also add our video or playlist button, something like the most recent upload or a specific video that you choose. And this one, we can actually make it bigger if we want it to fit inside perfectly snug or however we want it to fit inside. And you can adjust everything about it if you'd prefer to have used a different type of layout. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you could see the example live in action here. Subscribe to my channel or watch more of my videos on my channel for more tutorials, different content and all that. Follow me on social media at Justin OD Show to keep in touch with me. DM is the best place to reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.